Let me know when. Give me the tip. How are you, Mr. Tom? I'm fine today. How are you, Alex? All right. How was, your, hard today. how was your weekend? Good. We went out. Mostly we were at home and uh, took it easy. Played the trumpet, son. Huh? How is this pandemic treating you, Mr. Tom? How you been feeling? Is you okay? Is your family okay? Family's okay. I had a little cough once in a while because I have asthma. <laughs> so you check with your doctor and you okay? Yeah. Okay. I'm the doctor Friday. Mr. Tom, I have a couple of questions for you, if you can uh, okay. answer to us. Okay. okay. Uh, the first one is, is a couple of people asked me in the last video, they asked you wh when you decide to play trumpet. Oh, goodness. I was about nine years old. I was going to play the trombone. My arm wasn't long enough. I was kind of short. And, uh, but I liked it. I tried the trumpet and I liked it. My father was a teacher. He wanted me to go into French horn, but... I ended up with the trumpet and I stayed with it because I really, really loved it. Fifth, fifth, fifth grade, I guess. Uh, what, is, what do you think and is, the, is uh, the song that everybody enjoying? Somewhere, uh, some, something else the, the, over the rainbow. And who wrote it? Yeah, I think most everybody likes that. Uh, the young people might not know it too well. It was written by Harburg and... Uh, the only notes, I can't remember the, the other composer. <laughs> learner, not learner, learner. Okay. What's his second name? Well, the second name was Mr. Harlan. Harlan, that's right. Yes. Okay. Because uh, Richard Rogers, Rogers and Hart, that's easy. Rogers and Hammerstein, but that one is a little harder to remember. He also wrote Come Rain or Come Shine, if you've heard that. Okay. And, uh, Many, many more. Uh, but you want to hear uh, Over the Rainbow was in, of course, uh, 1939 movie with Julie Garland, uh, which is you remember, The Wizard of Oz. Do you remember what else uh, did he write? Come on, to the, uh, come on Rain. And, oh, yeah, the other one. There's many, but uh, Get Happy. Get Happy. That one is beautiful. Can you play? A little bit for us from that one. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that one. Really, but that gives you an idea. Okay. Uh, did you have an, a favorite musician? Uh, sure. I don't know. We'll go, we'll go back to Rainbow later. Uh, biggest influences on me were Freddie Herbert trumpet, Clifford Brown trumpet. Uh, John Coltrane, a lot of these jazz people are now deceased. The, the new ones are also good, but uh, did, you name, did, you na did you name one, one of your dogs as a musician too, right? Uh, what was his name? One of them was named Miles, and one of them was named uh, uh, Parker. Uh, we got that from, uh, from another guy. But and then many years ago, I had a cat named Hubbard, because the trumpet player was named Parker. Freddie. Parker who? Well, Charlie Parker was Dizzy Gillespie and Charlie Parker were the founders of Bebop, and so Parker was synonymous with heavy, serious jazz. Who does um, you play and sound like? What did you sound like? Well, my influence is I, I sound a little bit like Miles Davis, the cool jazz, but I get more Clifford Brown, who's more uh, straight in the chords. He came up in the 40s and 50s. And You're just a beautiful player. I've always kind of imitated him. Uh, can you tell me what was the uh, the big gig that you ever have? Oh, I'd have to say I think Ray Charles, and it actually lasted eight months. Uh, we, toured, we toured Europe and South Africa and all over. Well, Western United States, California, Eastern, uh, not so much the Midwest, but the East Coast. It was a, it was a lot of fun. Uh, Ray is marvelous musician. That was, was the best. And what was the weird? Uh, <laughs> the weird one. Well, I don't want to offend anybody. My first job in Los Angeles, uh, we, we played a gay club and I wasn't used to that. But that was fine. What year was yeah, that? Fine. That was 1973, so those kind of things were a little bit new. And, uh, and then some of the uh, uh, Tejano jobs, 
I was in a club one night. It was so hot. I was sweating. We were there five hours. A real funky club. We worked hard. But I've, I've always enjoyed doing the Latin music. And there was another one when San Antonio one time I visited my friend, played trumpet. The band was not good. <laughs> so that was a little bit hard. Oh, but so otherwise... You So you play Spanish music too? I did play some Spanish. Can you, can you give us a sample? That's some <laughs> some Spanish music. You I know. didn't really uh, prepare for it today. Let's say, but to play some for me, some of it. See, see, the people recognize that Spanish music, the flavor. Taste of my love or something like that? <laughs> yeah, taste of my love. Uh, Mr. Tom, uh, what is your favorite song today? <clears throat> well, most people probably not recognize it, but it's a very difficult John Coltrane jazz song, Countdown. I cannot play because I've never seen it. Real fat. Da, 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 da. Real, uh, and he also had one. In, that one's even harder than the other one. It's called uh, Giant Step. That one's... together you that you guys getting a gig uh, how people can start to see you you wanted the people started looking in you and you too uh, maybe listen to your songs maybe asking you for songs that you can play for these people they still going uh, still in home because the coronavirus so if I'm a youtuber and I wanted to ask you mr. Tom I want you to play for me can you do that in YouTube Can you record it so we can hear it in home or something like that? Well, right now, the only band I'm in is Bobby Rodriguez. We're rehearsing. He's got to have a job coming up. He's got a great big band. What about? Uh, the, the party I did at uh, your house, those fellas might want to play, Link and uh, Billy, and well, it was only a trio that time. We really needed a drummer. Uh, you know, it's hard to get people to do things with, without money, but if they're going to be on YouTube, they might be willing to... Coming so back. I'm asking you if, if you can um, I mean we have you have on a YouTube right can people go and see you in that YouTube account I believe it's uh, Tom Swayze yeah it's tw Tom Swayze so he can see you it's not Tom Swayze the ghost it's Tom Swayze <laughs> the musician <laughs> uh, what tune do you think is the most recognizable by, by most people Well, in this day and age, the uh, end of the 20th century, probably yesterday by Lennon and McCartney. Now, you know, there's more rock songs now, but Did that you? comes to mind. That was their biggest selling hit, for one thing. And I also put In the Mood, which was Glenn Miller, big band. But that goes for our parents, you know, our grandparents. And okay, can you play a little bit of yesterday or no, for us? Improvising our talk, and it was worth the songs that I went over, but I guess it's okay. <laughs> 
uh, who made the biggest impact on the Bebo jazz? Oh, I'd say for sure Charlie Parker and then Dizzy Gillespie, who was his associate, and then it went down from there. There's so many great ones out there, so many great players and artists. What is something the people uh, often get wrong about you, Mr. Tom? Well, they think about well, Wacko. I'm really a nice guy, but once in a while I have an emotional difficulty. All right. I see you smiling all the time too. Well, I don't know. Smiling. I don't know. Maybe people started. A, if the people started to recognize you, they see you. Maybe started to see what sweet home we have in home. That would be good. Sure. That would be really good. Really good. Are you wanted to, to give us uh, and another song before we leave. What do you want to give us from your heart? I mean. Or if uh, you read music, Mr. Tom? Well, I read music, but we were talking that maybe playing from the heart and not using music would be better for the interview. I'll give you, let's do a few measures of blues and then I'm going to do run through the, the over the rainbow right quick. Thank you. thinking he can play trumpet you know <laughs> how, how long he been taking you to to learn how you know put your lips in the in the in the piece uh, well to tell you the truth I started at nine years old you think I'd be good by now no I'm pretty good I actually reached my early 70s now so that's 60 60 years, I guess. Now, you usually learn the first two or three years to get the basics. By the time you finish high school, if you've practiced, if you practice, you'll be pretty darn good. And then you go into college, and maybe you can go on a road with a big band or a rock group. By then, you're professional, maybe by the time you're 23. So you considered yourself already 60 years playing trumpet. Did you, did you feel that you accomplished 
or you still need the practice to be better? I've, I've accomplished some. I need to practice every day to keep in shape and I try to learn new things to keep up with the standards of the, uh, I guess you'd say competition, but I want to learn new things, especially the jazz field. And, uh, well, you have to, you know, practice the sum just to stay saying Benny Goodman, the famous clarinetist, he said, he, as great as he was, he, he said, I have to practice every day or risk losing my grip on the fingerings. So uh, that's just the way it is with a wind instrument. You have to. Did you ever record any singles in your career? You, uh, I've got demos of my own. I actually did a couple of singles in the uh, Mexican American field with a group called Mickey. Mickey Hernandez, Mickey and the Mex Tex. I have two singles in there and we did two albums. Uh, but I have the 45s in my record collection. It was fun. We had two two trumpets and we used to tour with uh, you know Chicano music. It was a great group. We had, had a lot of fun. Any 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 time sooner that we're gonna hear it and you two or something like that, you you planning to do something with that forty fives, maybe put it in U2 or or burn it to the CDs and well, if it's possible, sure. I'd like people to hear it. I'm sure Mickey would like people to hear it too. Uh, he's in Los Angeles. I haven't talked to him in many years, but it was a really good. If we go, if we get to do that, sure, I'd love to do that. Okay, Mr. Tom, I I really really thank you for everything, and I appreciate it. Um, and I'll see you soon. Thank you so much. See, I'd like to see you soon. Thank you very much, and we had a nice time here.